in 8% of the human population, there is a muscle called the sternalis that travels on the front of the sternum. And it's really interesting because like, why would you need a muscle, skeletal muscle? This is the type of muscle that is there to generate movement at a joint on something that obviously does not move. Your sternum, like you tried this right now, go ahead. Like try to, <laughs> you can't do it, right? The, the sternum is fused. It, it, it's three distinct portions. So to me, this has always looked like a necktie. So you have like the knot of the necktie, then you have like the length of the necktie. So this is called the manubrium. Then this longer portion is the body. And then this really sharp tip down here is called the xiphoid process. And so you can see that written right here. And xiphoid actually means like sharp sword. So I think that's a really great name. And this is also something you have to be very aware of if you're doing, say, uh, you know, um, you say it's like you're a first responder or you're just there like on the scene and you're doing chest compressions. You don't want to break the xiphoid process off into the liver, which is going to be underneath it. Which also, interestingly, uh, this is if you're under the age of 40, it's made of cartilage. But if you're over the age of 40, this should have ossified and fully turned to bone for you. And so this is actually three separate bones. But um, to understand why there was a muscle there in the first place, you got to just kind of understand what the sternum used to be. So the sternum used to be collapsible. Like the sternum actually ha used to have joints. You could think of like each little section like a sternibra. So think like a vertebra for your back, like your backbones. There were sternibri. These were just individual sections. And then you had this muscle that would contract on either side to collapse it. And you might be like, well, why on earth would you ever really need that? Well, what it really comes down to is the fact that we were quadrupedal, right? We used to walk on all four limbs. And when you're doing that, think, think of like a gallop, think like a cat, just sit there galloping, sprinting like a cheetah. It makes sense that this would be able to collapse to help you generate more torque during that run. And that's exactly what used to happen. But you don't do that anymore. You're a human. You're weird. Like, I don't think people understand just how weird it is to be a human. You walk on two legs, but your body and your body is adapted to that. Yes, absolutely. But you also still have a lot of the form and the function of a quadruped. And so what's happened is we like walked on our two legs and just took our steps and all this kind of stuff. The sternum's like, well, I don't need to collapse anymore. So it began to fuse. And we, but the thing is, if you actually look at the developmental history of ourselves, right? I'm talking like go back in utero, right? If you could rewind your own clock and you could see your sternum developing inside of your mother's uterus, what you'd see is there were actually six different sections to this thing. So basically, like if you look closely, there's like these little ridge lines here. These are helping you to kind of give it, get a sense that the body of the sternum, which is, again, is this longer portion right here, this used to have four individual sections to it, and the manubrium used to have two different sections to it. Um, and so, like, actually what happened, like, both of the, like, so think of, like, the sternum as being, like, cartilage coming together, and then it's going to start fusing. And then you would originally have just these individual sections, but then that's going to ossify, it's going to fully fuse um, as it goes through, but it's, like, our developmental history, like current developmental stages during embryological and fetal development, they still have this evolutionary callback. Right? They're still like, no, the sternum was these individual sections. So this bone here is really fascinating. It seems like a simple bone. I mean, what it's there, it's protecting your heart. It's protecting your lungs. You can see that there's like these individual like little it's better to actually see it from here, right? So you can see like these sections where the ribs are going to attach. Not all of them. Uh, it's really just the true ribs. And the true ribs are, it's kind of hard to explain. Actually, you know what? I think that might have, uh, let's see. I'm pretty sure. Aha, you can see it right here. Let's do this. By the way, just so in case you're wondering, I'm using a 100% free KenHub article. You can just go ahead and follow along. We're going to go ahead and leave that link to that article down in the description below. So go ahead and jump down there. You can see this for yourself. So you can see that the sternum, it's, so basically what it does is it's an attachment site, right? It's an attachment site for the ribs, but also the clavicle, right? So what most people would probably just commonly call their collarbone. So what happens is the clavicle comes over here and it's going to just kind of attach right here and form a joint. And then you can see that there are these ridge lines that the ribs come through and they're going to connect via cartilage. So like these little, like you, there's a reason why this is colored differently. So you have the bone, which goes around like this, that's the rib. And then you have these costal cartilages that help kind of like attach those ribs 
on the anterior side of your body to the sternum. But the thing is, if we look down here, you can see that it's not every rib, right? There's ribs down here. They come over and their cartilage joins with the cartilage of the ribs above them. These are called the false ribs. Um, so that like the, your true ribs are the ones that have a direct connection to the sternum. And then the false ribs are the ones that kind of like piggyback on the cartilage and the cartilaginous attachments for, uh, for, uh, for the other ribs. And so kind of interesting to think about, but the sternum, so you can see this is a giant protector, right? Like this is a good attachment site. It's going to help protect that heart, but this is also going to serve as a muscle attachment site too. Right, so what you're not seeing here is the, the muscle pectoralis major is going to come in here and attach to the sternum. So it's not just the sternalis on here, which by the way, I'm going to come back to because you might be wondering like, like if 8% of the population still has this, why on earth do they still have it? Does it do anything? But we'll, we'll get back to that because the pectoralis major is going to attach here. But if we look at this xiphoid process, this is also going to be, serve as an attachment site. Like the diaphragm on the inside is actually going to come around and attach to the xiphoid process. The rectus abdominis, right, your six-pack muscle, is going to attach to the xiphoid process. It comes up farther. And it's not just the xiphoid process, but it does attach to the xiphoid process. So this is a this is actually a pretty important piece of tissue. I mean, it's it's simple. <laughs> it's it's not overly complicated, but it but it's still going to be a pretty simple uh, muscle. So. But let's 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 think let's talk about this. I want you to, again. I want you to think about like for eight percent of the human population, there is this sternalis muscle. What is it doing? Like if you have this, so it's two muscle bellies. You can just kind of picture two strings coming down, connecting the manubrium down to the body. What is that going to do for you? Not much. Um, there's basically two. There's two camps. Some say it is literally useless. It does basically nothing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what we call a vestigial structure. It's a leftover of evolution back when we actually did need that collapsible sternum during a gallop. Uh, others though would say that it's proprioceptive, meaning like you could picture as you have these muscle bellies coming down, there's also going to be neurons, right? That are going to be coming from it and they can relay to the brain, the position of the sternum. And you're like, what is, how's that useful? I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's the most useful thing. So here's what I mean by that. Like, imagine I when I take a breath, like, my sternum is now moving. And so what would happen is during that movement, it is possible that the sternalis could sense some of that movement and it could relay positional information to your brain and be like, hey, guess what? My sternum is now here. Oh, now my sternum is here. Now my sternum is here. <sighs> it's not very profound. But at the same time, it's also not the only piece of tissue that does that. You have to understand, like, your tissues are very richly innervated. And so there's going to be that positional information going to your brain from other things. It's not like you need a sternalis, right? It's, it's not like if you're part of the other 92% of the human population who doesn't have a sternalis, it's not like you're like, where's my sternum? Where's my sternum? Like, that's, that's just not how it works. It's just not how it works. But it's interesting to see the variability in this anatomy. And uh, so who knows? I don't know. Maybe you can fill in there. Maybe you might be able to determine if you have it. I doubt it. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, I mean, you could always, uh, There's there are tests you could take where you could actually sense if there's any kind of muscle tissue underneath. But I don't know why you'd want to do that. But still, sternum is an interesting bone. Sternum is a super interesting bone. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, go ahead and leave a like down below and leave a comment to see what else you would like us to discuss in the future. Remember, you can also find a 100% free link to this article um, down in the description below. It's going to take you to the Ken Hub platform, but you're also going to see a whole lot of other things while you're there. You're going to see that we have quizzes. We have um, study units. We have, we, and not just by the way, do we not just only have quizzes. We have quizzes that are built to teach and quizzes that are built to test. Um, there is so much to explore on the Ken Hub platform. So while you're there checking out this free article, be sure to just see everything else we have to offer. But again, hopefully you had, hopefully you learned something today uh, about the sternum, but thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.